coach now. Uh, Merry Christmas to uh, to absolutely everybody uh, in uh, in Vol Nation, uh, fans, players, uh, staff here on campus. Just uh, last eleven months have been absolutely uh, fantastic for myself and my family, and we're so blessed to be here. And just appreciate everything that you guys have done, and, and uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, finishing up our, our bowl practice here this morning with uh, as far as uh, here in, at uh, at Knoxville, and, and excited about what our guys have done. <clears throat> you know, last you know, five, six days, gotten more into uh, to the preparation for Purdue. I think we're in a great spot and excited for, uh, for a couple of days off for these guys to get a chance to go home and, and then meet up uh, on Christmas Day with, uh, with them back at, uh, at the bowl site. Looking forward to that and uh, ready to go play some ball here on the 30th. So with that, open it up. Throw it right there. <clears throat> With uh, Alante not playing in the uh, the Music City Bowl, how's the competition at cornerback been uh, these last couple of practices, kind of competing for reps? Yeah, for sure. Uh, a bunch of guys that uh, have repped at it, um, have a chance to see multiple guys play there. Um, you know, you've seen during the course of the season, guys be down, and next guy steps up and has performed really well. So expect good things from uh, from the guys that are out there, you know, on the 30th. Ben, did Adam? <clears throat> Josh, just with both of your tight ends coming back next year, just how excited are you for that? And, and what's their next step and what are they capable of next year? Yeah, both of them are, are just beginning their journey as a player. I really believe that their, their physical development will be critical this offseason. Uh, that'll be a big part of them continue to take another jump in their play. <clears throat> and they've done that already in the, in the 11 months that uh, we've been here. Um, I think both of them have been playing their best football, you know, the middle half of the season on. They got a lot better understanding of, of you know, how to execute and, and uh, do the things that we need them to in the run game, in the pat game, in protections. Uh, those two guys coming back uh, will be a, a big part of, of us moving forward next year and, and uh, excited to have those guys back. They represent what's good inside of this program, too. They're two great young uh, people on and off the field. How unique is their working relationship? <clears throat> yeah, extremely selfless. They don't care, you know. They don't care who starts. They don't care who gets the ball. Uh, if you watch one of them have success during the drive, they come off. The other guy's the first guy to high five them, tap them on the helmet. You know, they uh, they truly help each other out. And they're great teammates and great leaders inside of our program. <clears throat> is uh, is rust a real concern in bowl games, especially on offense when you haven't played a month? And how do you combat that? Yeah, for sure. You watch, you watch bowl games, turnovers, penalties, uh, you know, rear their head in in, uh, in those games, and um, rust uh, is a part of that. Uh, I think that's why you got to do uh, a good amount of good on good work while you're here at home too. Uh, make sure they understand the speed tempo of the of the football game. Um, you know. I, <clears throat> Bowl games are unique in that you got to have some fun and enjoy being around each other. Um, but when you're in the building and it's football time, you got to be able to, to lock in. These guys have had really good practices here at home. When you get to the bowl site, you got to be able to manage that uh, in the same way. Patrick and Britt. Coach, I think we asked you about Purdue early on. You didn't know much. Now that you've gotten a little bit more into game prep, what do you what do you know about them and what do you yeah. expect to see from them? <clears throat> Defensively, extremely physical, play hard. Um, Front seven, um, you know, physical at the point of attack, and, and uh, you know we got to do a good job. You just look at them; they've done a good job in, in red zone areas, and, and uh, we got to do a good job of creating some explosive plays, staying out of third and long uh, with them uh, offensively. You know their ability to, to throw the football around is uh, is something that we got to do a great job of of being able to manage. And, and uh, you know your front four or, or your pressures, you know you got to get home and make it uncomfortable for the quarterback. Do a good job of getting it out of his hands. Screen game as well. Um, to do that, you got to be able to get your hands up and affect the throwing lanes as well. Coach, a couple of house cleaning things. One, we're seeing some different protocols go into place for college teams in regards to COVID. Where are you guys? Are you dealing with anything? Are you putting protocols in? And two, where are you at right tackle with, with Cade, with the ankle, and kind of where are you at that position right now? Yeah, Cade continues to get better. Uh, hasn't got a ton of work here uh, at home. Uh, we'll see where he's at when we get to, to the bowl site. He continues to, to get better. Um, <clears throat> COVID protocols, doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Obviously, there's been a spike just in our, our, our population, general population. Um, you're always concerned about that because it, it deals with just the safety of your, of your football team. You know, I think our vaccination rate's up above 90%. Um, you know, some guys have gotten boosters. I don't know the number of, of guys that have, um, but uh, – we're in a good spot right now. Really haven't had many issues with it. 
but as you disperse, players go home, they come back, all of those things, you're, you're concerned about all of that. Yeah, just to follow up on that, how do you uh, how do you find out about guys' status if somebody does test positive, or is there do you stay in contact through the holidays, or just find out when you get back on Sunday? No, I mean just the guys that are non-vaccinated will continue to get get tested, and <clears throat> if somebody tests positive, that's when you find out. Any anxiety with you, or do you just kind of it's going to happen? It's going to happen. Not, not anxiety. It's. Your first concern, right, uh, when you're in this position is just the health and safety of your team as a whole. So that's the thing that you're most concerned about. You, you try to educate them consistently, um, you know, throughout the entire year, not just during the football season and not just because of a bowl game. Um, you make them aware of what's going on in the general public as they will be in that uh, area more, uh, just more time during bowl preparation, plus they're going back home and, uh, you know, try to make sure that they're taking care of themselves. Whenever you go to a bowl game, the, the week of the bowl, there's all these other events and things going on. How do you, how do you balance um, game prep and, and all the bowl festivities the week, up, the week prior? Yeah, uh, different for us. We don't have afternoon meetings. Um, you know, we elongate our, our morning meetings a little bit to cover up what happened in the previous practice and, and our situations that we're going into that day. When it's football time, you've got to be dialed in and, and, and be into that moment. Um, truly focus on what's important in, in that moment. And... When it's time to, you know, you're done with the football side of it, your, your players got to enjoy that bowl experience too. And, and enjoying it is a part of being ready to, to go play uh, and do it the right way at the end of the week too. You've had several signees who are midterm enrollees here for practice the last few days. What, not break down each one, but kind of general impression. And, and what do you think of, of that, of, of having a guy here for three or four days? What's, what's the real benefit of that at the end of the day? First of all, they're getting thrown right into the middle of it. You, you, we've been working with our players for 11 months for them to be where they're at and understanding our scheme, right? Um, <clears throat> the, the great benefit for them is they get introduced to the team, get introduced to, to what the culture is, um, you know, on the football side of it in the meetings and, and on the practice field to get a ton of individual work. Um, <clears throat> so to me, like in these four days or maybe at six days, depending, they all kind of came in at, at different different times, um, <clears throat> they get great exposure. Now they got, you know, three and a half weeks to go back home. You know, they'll work out a little bit. They get accustomed to what we're doing in the weight room. Um, so they got a chance to, to take some of that back home with them. When they come back, I, th I think it just creates great comfort in coming here. They, they've already been introduced into, you know, their position groups. They know all the guys and truly have sat in the meeting room with them, hung out with them. Um, I think it just eases the transition when they get back as well. And as a follow-up, with Jared and Mincy, you didn't talk about him, obviously, on signing day. I know he's here. What, what, what was the connection? What led you to him? What do you like about him? Why did, he, why did you think he fit from, from a yeah, had, had recruited uh, him previously, um, knew his uh, his background, Coach Ellerby did uh, as well. Um, young man that's got fa great physical attributes, um, that is still grow growing as a, as a player, and uh, felt like, you know, the number of years that he has, uh, he can come in here and, and make a long-term impact here inside of our program. Back. <clears throat> Hey, Coach, uh, not football-related question. Uh, for Christmas coming up, do you have any fun family Christmas traditions, and have you ever received a Christmas gift that you would deem your favorite? Christmas gift that I would deem my favorite? Man, probably a set of lockers when I was, like, five years old. You know, I felt like you know, my bedroom had turned into a locker room. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Purple and gold, big Vikings fan back in the day, you know. So pretty excited about that. Um, uh, Christmas traditions. Man, <clears throat> major Christmas tradition is this afternoon I'll grab my daughter, potentially my son, but definitely my daughter, and we'll go do some shopping for my wife. That's number one <laughs> checklist item I got to get done before we get to, uh, to the 25th. I guess he did telling you he was coming back probably kind of as an early Christmas gift for you too. What, what was your reaction to him deciding to come back, and how much comfort does that give you knowing that that position's – I don't say taken care of, but he's coming back and the way he played this year. Yeah, just uh, excited for him because uh, he made a, a choice based on the information that he was provided that 
is going to help him in the long run, and, and he's excited and wants to. His heart's here at Tennessee, wants to be a part of this football team moving forward. Uh, so extremely excited for him, his family, and for our football team in that great leader. And, uh, you know, just believe that he's still becoming the best version of, of himself as a, as a player. <clears throat> Have an opportunity to, to change some things fundamentally, continue to grow. Um, you know, last year you're so worried about getting your scheme in that some of the, the global view things uh, you don't get a chance to, to touch on in year one. And so we'll be able to do that with him. And, and uh Really excited to have him, and, and uh, obviously the way that he's played. Um, you know, you look at it like a, a football game, like each quarter of the season, he's just continued to get better and better, and I think that speaks to, to what he's able to do next year too. Eric? Yesterday, Warren Burrell talked about uh, not only practicing on the field as a pro, but also in the weight room, in the meeting room, stuff like that. Where have you seen uh, Warren kind of grow in his maturity level and, of course, his attributes on the field yeah, this season? I think that's um, – you know, the challenge for any young player coming into our, our program is to have that mentality and approach every day and everything that you do that way. It's the challenge for the guys that are coming back to elevate their, their stock at the, at the next level. Um, I think, you know, Theo Jackson is a perfect example of that. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. That's, that's happened for Theo this year. and uh, He's got a great future ahead of him because of it. Warren <clears throat> is a young player that is only going to continue to get better, you know. Um, Physically for him, the strength and conditioning, the nutrition, everything that you're doing, understand that every decision you make takes you closer or further away from your, from your goals is something that is going to be big for him this off season. <clears throat> Being a pro in the meeting room, truly understanding his spot, but all 11 other and how that affects his job, I think is how he continues to elevate his game. And, and as he does that, you know, he's going to gain inches every single day. You look back on it when it's time to go kick off next fall, and he will have come a long ways. Coach, obviously, uh, when you get all these extra practices going into a bowl game, that, that's an advantage. How can your team grow, and, and in what areas can you grow with these extra practices going into the bowl game? Yeah, to me, it's like anything in, inside of this game. You know, I got two kids. I watch them and see them every single day, you know, during the off season, right? Like, you don't notice it until, you know, you see a, a picture from two months previous, right? You know, in some ways, football is that way, right? You're, you're making incremental inches every single day that, you, that you're gaining. You know, you look back a month or two or at the end of a, you know, an off season strength and conditioning period or at the end of spring ball, man, you see the distance that, you, that you've traveled. <clears throat> Young guys got a ton of development here in, in uh, the practices uh, here at home. Individual group work and then a bunch of teamwork too. And so become way more accustomed and, and uh, grow in a really quick way. Um, and I think that can speed up, accelerate, uh, channel their focus when they come back the following semester and understand the gains that they need to make. Um, you know, before they get into a, a spring practice, you know, and for some of the early enrollees, I'd say the same thing, you know, the speed of the game, the fundamentals, everything's happening so fast for them. They get a chance to get exposed to it, man, it can accelerate their urgency when they come back here in January as well. <coughs> how, well how well do you know Jeff Brom and do you consider, do you consider you two guys from a similar school of football, the modern, fun, wide-open offense? Um, I, I don't know, uh, Jeff, really. Um, I, I think, you know, you know he's been in, in the past game, you know, throughout his, his career, everywhere that he's been. Um, you know, I'm not going to say pass-heavy, but it's a major part of what they do. <clears throat> you know, when he was playing early in his career, you know, they were one of the first teams in the, in the spread, too, similar to, to my background.